on this episode of Making It Work, we're going to be making deer bone broth. A couple years ago when I was diagnosed with colitis, a friend of my brother's uh, got a deer and um, he let us have the meat. And when we took it to be processed, uh, we told him that we wanted the bones as, as soup bones. And they, they cut them up in nice little pieces and vacuum packed them and stuff. And so last year when my brother, my dad, and my nephew all got deer, I was like, oh, I want the, I want the bones, I want the bones to make bone broth. And um, I got a box of bones. <laughs> they just brought this whole box of bones, literally. So I had to go through and um, separate them and put them in bags to, to freeze for a while. But what I've done with this one, the best thing to do with deer bone broth or how to make it is to start out by roasting it. You'd want to do that with beef broth. But you'd kind of want to do it with anything because we, we roast the chickens first or we, we um, cook them in the crock pot. But for this you just need to roast the bones for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so at about 325, 350. So I've got my oven preheated and what I've done is put a little marinade in there and uh, all I'm going to do is dump it into this little casserole dish, put the cover on. I made the mistake of leaving the cover off one time and it burnt it and it, the, all of the broth kind of had a burnt flavor to it, but we'll stick this in the oven and see what we come up with. Smells pretty good. Okay, and then to that, I'm going to add this plate of veggies. There's onions, carrots, bay leaves, parsley, some so. So usually you would use um, some, you know, regular celery stalks, but I don't have any in the house right now. But I did have some celery, it's like some dried celery, so that's what I'm using in here. And then I'm just kind of dump that in there with it. That was a whole onion, including the skin part, because it doesn't matter. You're gonna you're gonna strain it all out of there anyway. Several little carrots. Parsley, um, and celery. This is a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. It's unfiltered, and you don't taste it in the end. I can smell it right now, but you don't taste it in the end. Um, it just helps pull the nutrients out of the bones as they're cooking. And then this is one and a half teaspoons of sea salt some peppercorns, some thyme, and some garlic. And again, normally you would, you would want to use regular garlic. Again, the, um, the peel and all on those things just kind of crush them up a little bit. I didn't have any, so I'm using garlic powder. Um, same kind of effect. It's, it's organic and everything, so sprinkle that in there. I already put some water in there, but I'm just going to fill it all the way up to the, to the top here. And I'm starting with cool water. And I'm going to put the lid on, put it on low, and let this go for at least 24 hours. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later, and the, the, the broth is smelling good. When I took the lid off, Tim was like, Ooh, what is that? Is that that stuff? And um, some of it is probably the marinade that I use. I use marinade on the deer bone broth just to take some of the wild, wild flavor out of it. And it's um, coconut aminos, um, garlic and onion, some pepper, thyme, you know, just that sort of stuff. 
um, marinate it for, I don't know, overnight. So it's a long pro. All these things are a long process that I do the, the sourdough and the the bone broth and stuff like that. But anyway, just marinate it for a little while, at, at least a couple hours, and then roast the meat for about 30 minutes or roast the bones. There's there's a little meat on them. So now after it has been in the crock pot for 24 hours, all I'm going to do is start scooping the broth out of there and um, put it through a, a colander and then after it cools I will put it through an actual um, like a little screen type sieve. So this is the process where we're at right now. We're just taking it out of there and putting it on and it does smell good. I wish I wish you could smell it. Too bad it's not smelly. All right. Let's scratch and sniff. Or scratch and sniff. <laughs> yeah, scratch and sniff might work too. That's where we're at right now. As I'm scooping here, I want to sort of explain some of, some of what happens here. See these connective, well, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm trying to get it out of there, but it's hot. It's still really hot. I'll just grab it. Ooh. <laughs> grab a cord. I still can't get it. But the connective tissue up around the, the top of the bone, like the, the joints and stuff, that's where you're going to get your collagen. That's a really, really important nutrient for us to get out of the bone broth. And then um, you get a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, the, I mean, the, the whole structure of this bone has changed. It's, um, this, is, this is almost dry already. And you get a lot of nutrients out of this marrow and stuff, too. And that was some of what the, um, the apple cider vinegar was for was to leach that good stuff out of there and you do not taste it. You can't, you can't smell it or anything. It's just to help get those minerals out of that stuff. That's, that's what makes the bone broth so important to our diets, to our bodies and stuff. I'll, I'm going to let this cool probably overnight and then put it through the screen sieve in the morning. So this morning the bone broth has been chilled overnight and it's nice and thick and um, what I'm going to do is skim it through this little screen type sieve one more time, put it in a baggie and put it in the freezer. And then um, we'll use it in like soups, um, sometimes we'll just drink the broth because it's good for you and it tastes pretty good. Um, Piper has some food allergies and I may use some of this to um, just to flavor her food because she gets tired of eating the same old thing over and over what she the food that she can eat and um, let's see I'll just show you what I'm going to do here and all this is getting out is just the really fine impurities Or little pieces of fat. I just freeze it in two cup portions. And I will label this one as Dear Bone Broth. Put it in there, make a nice little thing, and then it lays flat in the freezer. It works really well. That is how you make bone broth. Deer, that's deer bone broth. Thanks for watching Making It Work. Hey, on this episode of Making It Work, we're going to be making some deer bone broth. Um, a couple years ago, when I, about the time I was diagnosed with colitis, uh, 
a friend of my brother's got a deer and he gave us the meat, gave us the, we took it to be processed. Ah! I haven't done this in a while, can you tell?